France is ready to uh, support this status of uh, candidate to the European Union. That Estonia fully supports uh, Ukraine on this issue. Uh, we want Ukraine to be uh, a member of the European Union eventually. Yes, we will be building this free, prosperous and peaceful, secure Europe. What we have now? Ukraine is the most already country for the candidate status than any country that is already a candidate. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, NGO, Euro-Atlantic Course and Analytical Center of Ukrainian Catholic University. My name is Victoria Zabian, I'm head of the UCMC Press Center. Please like, share this video and subscribe our channel to stay tuned. Ukraine's application for the EU membership will be considered very soon. Unfortunately for Ukrainians, there is still no consensus in the EU on whether all member states want to see Ukraine as a full member of European family. Why there is no unity in the EU concerning this issue and what can be done to convince skeptical states that not only Ukraine needs the EU, but the EU needs Ukraine. These questions will be covered today by experts that we invited. We would like to start with Ukrainian speakers, in particular Ivan Klimpos Tsensadze, Ukrainian MP, who presents argument from Ukrainian side. Let's take a look. There are several tendencies in the European Union today why there is skepticism that Ukraine should not be getting candidate status uh, in the nearest um, uh, meeting of the European Council in June. Uh, and those are countries that are skeptical towards the enlargement process as such. That is one tendency and unfortunately that includes big countries and influential countries such as uh, France or the Netherlands or Belgium, for example. Uh, there is another reason which is being uh, used at this particular moment in all of the discussions and that is that uh, equal treatment should be um, used for countries such as Ukraine or Moldova or other countries and the countries of the Western Balkans that have been also waiting for their right to be um, to be opened the door to the European Union and there is kind of a third um, tendency that some of the countries are stating that um, from their perspective Ukraine has not done enough yet in order to achieve uh, the goal of uh, being granted the candidate status. We in Ukraine as Ukrainian parliamentarians and as those ones who have been working um, since 2014 uh, very dedicatedly to our European cause uh, disagree with all three of these tendencies. First and foremost, I think it is time for the EU to understand that enlargement of the, um, uh, of the area of prosperity, of freedom, of democracy is the best guarantee for security and peace in the future. Uh, with regard to the Western Balkans and, and their path, Ukraine definitely is not crossing the way, crossing the road for anybody, while uh, insisting that at this particular moment we would have to be embedded in the European project in order to have the future, in order to know that we have this possibility to transform their country. And thirdly, definitely Ukraine over this year, since 2014, after the revolution of dignity, after um, having started to uh, implement the association agreement, has uh, done a lot of uh, really serious transformative work inside the country. And that means that we have managed to implement already 63% of the association agreement. That means that we have managed to conduct um, um, incredibly difficult reforms um, that have allowed us to get the uh, visa-free status. We have managed to reorient um, almost half of our trade already to the uh, European uh, Union and that means there is a quality sign on our products and on the processes that are um, how those products and so services and capital how they are produced in Ukraine. So therefore we believe that Ukrainian people who are right now fighting every single day for their values and for the right to um, build democratic, free, independent, prosperous country 
do have the right to be um, to be let into the European family even formally to have this um, light at the end of the tunnel in order to to know that once we win this brutal war that Russia has waged against us we will be able to uh, to ensure our real participation as a strong nation as a strong member in the European Union to all those skeptics we would like to underline that from our perspective uh, many generations already within the EU have forgotten that values have to be defended and from our perspective values are really important only when they are fought for when they are defended and not when they are exclusively just declared so um, I appreciate the, the stance that already the President of the European Commission is taking, saying that it is moral obligation for the European Union countries, for the European Union institutions to help Ukraine to go through this transformation path and join the uh, EU family in the future. We are not asking for shortcuts. We are not asking for some special treatment, but we believe that today it's um, something very important to be said uh, from the European nations to Ukrainian people to 91% of Ukrainians who are supporting today our membership in the EU and to say something to all those nations and all those societies in Europe that more than 66% on average are supporting Ukraine's membership in the EU when Ukraine is ready to say yes we will be building this free prosperous and peaceful secure Europe to together in the future once we all together will win this war against barbaric autocratic regime that has decided to um, impose chaos and uh, destruction on the whole world. Serhii Sidorenko, editor-in-chief of the news outlet European Pravda, underlines that Ukraine is much more ready to become a EU member than other European countries on the beginning of their way to EU. 90% of Ukrainians are in favor to become a EU member, and this is the highest numbers for Ukrainian society for the whole history. Hi. My name is Sergey, and I'm an editor of, uh, of the only and the key media in Ukraine that solely covers European integration. And let me share with you a few thoughts about what we have now. Now, well, just saying that it's a decisive moment uh, is a nonsense because everyone knows that everything is what is going on in Ukraine is decisive and not only for Ukraine. But now we are in a strange situation uh, when it comes to our European integration. I mean rapprochement of Ukraine with the EU. On one side we can say that Ukraine have uh, reached a level of ambition or even preliminary results that we have never imagined to see just four or five months ago. Because after uh, the war has, um, active war has erupted, or after Russia has started mass invasion uh, to Ukraine, we at the same time have speed up uh, our ambitions and moves towards the EU, applying for membership and, and studying the procedure. But at the same time, we are on on the brink of possible uh, dissatisfaction of Ukrainian people, of possible frustration of Ukrainian people, because it is very possible that uh, European leaders in less than a month, uh, by the end of June, on their next summit, would not uh, grant Ukraine a candidate status. Of course, it is uh, clear that there would not be a, a kind of denial. There would be some formula like we are ready to, to consider provisional status and so on, blah, blah, blah. But what we have now, Ukraine is the most already country for the candidate status than any country that is already a candidate by the time when they got that status. In Western Balkans no single country, no single country was that much integrated with the EU when they have become candidates. 
No single country was that much aligned with EU a key like Ukraine now. And even in Central Europe, I would say that in Central Europe, again, uh, probably no single country was that ready for European integration when they became candidates and when they were approved that they meet Copenhagen criteria in 1990s, compared with nowadays Ukraine. So for us it looks quite strange. It's not only because of war. It is because of European citizens do demand their government to reproach Ukraine. Ukraine is ready to get not a membership, absolutely not a membership, but just a candidacy, a sign that we are considered as future possible part of European uh, family. Ukrainian people are ready as well, and Ukrainian people are, are supporting European integration in immense numbers. More than 90 persons, 90 persons of Ukrainian population is uh, supporting European integration of Ukraine. You could hardly find any topic in most of European countries where more than 90 persons are united in, in, in one idea, idea. And it doesn't mean that those 10 uh, who are not in this 90 are against. Mostly they are undecided, and those who are against European integration is just one or two persons. So the country is, has total consensus towards not just joining EU tomorrow, that is not possible, but first of all, a consensus towards uh, passing by reforms, having clear goal somewhere even in uh, long-term future, but anyway, that goal is needed. Unfortunately, we are uh, in a situation when this can be, well, not ruined, but very much undermined, if they, you do not understand what is going on e in the continent, what is going on in Ukraine, and why Ukraine is needed for the uh, United Europe. I very much hope that European leaders would finally understand, first of all, leaders of those big countries, Germany, France, Spain, Netherlands. People in all these four states are clearly, with large, solid majority, are supporting future membership of Ukraine, saying no, even masked no, even whale no, would mean no for their own citizens. Of course, it does not mean that the next day Ukraine would turn their back to Europe. It is not possible. When you have that, that large support uh, of this geopolitical direction, you, you cannot just uh, turn around like this. But it would hardly undermine those reformers who want to change Ukraine those uh, pro-European uh, politicians, because they would need also to deal with strong anti-EU, or not anti-EU, but Eurosceptics, who would say, well, you see, Europe does not want us, they are just lying. And that would be fueled also by Russian propaganda. And we now already see that from Russian MFA, who has recently officially said that <laughs> you have seen, Europe does not want you. They do not even want to grant you a candidate status. Of course, I don't expect that uh, Mr. Scholz or uh, Monsieur Macron would be able to see my errors, but I very much hope that European citizens would say their world to their leaders. Thank you. And now we will move to the foreign uh, speakers that we invited. Fortunately, in addition to skeptics, there are many optimists in the EU about Ukrainian membership. Estonia, one of the countries that actively supports Ukraine on its European path and promotes Ukraine's European integration in every possible way. We asked member of the Estonian Parliament, Raiman Kalyulait, to comment today's topic. Hello, I've been asked to comment um, on the um, possibility of Ukraine becoming 
um, a candidate member of the European Union and then eventually, of course, um, joining the European Union. Now, the first thing I have to say is, is of course, that Estonia fully supports uh, Ukraine on this issue. Uh, we want Ukraine to be uh, a member of the European Union eventually. Uh, we understand that, you know, it's... Uh, it is it is a is a complicated process, but uh, we completely support the idea of Ukraine becoming a candidate member uh, as soon as possible, uh, really, and and we don't see any any major obstacles um, for Europe to take that decision. Now, um, what might be some of the some of the problems, or of, you know, the, there are. Uh, clearly, uh, countries in Europe and, and politicians in Europe who are, um, you know, if not outright uh, against the idea, then at least uh, very sceptical of of that perspective or, or you know, be, becoming a candidate member uh, right now or in a very short uh, time frame. So, uh, you know, there, there are some issues. Uh, first of all, of course, um, you know, some... Um, politicians and uh, representatives of, of European Union countries um, do have the view that uh, that it, it is a very you know there are strict criteria that have to be met. It is a process in the European Union, and there cannot be any uh, any shortcuts or any any um, exceptions really made to that uh, process. Um, then I, I, I you know I would have to say that probably there is also an undercurrent. That is not mentioned very often, and and is you know is not very diplomatic really uh, to say, but 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 it does exist, and, and and I think that's the view of some politicians in in Western Europe that actually the previous rounds of of uh, EU enlargement might have been um, a mistake, or at least uh, or at least they feel that it has brought along um, you know some quite. Uh, uh, big challenges and problems for the European uh, Union. Uh, you know, it's the processes of the European Union are such that uh, that any you know major decision demands that there would be an uh, you know um, a consensus among member states. And we we see that, for instance, when we talk about the uh, latest sanctions, uh, it's very difficult to uh, reach that consensus sometimes. And and it, you know clearly there are some countries in Eastern Europe that have given. You know the previous enlargement, um, somewhat of a of a bad name, um, and and some um, you know uh, some might be quite exasperated by by their behaviour. So, so I think that's also uh, an issue. Uh, that's also a an issue I think uh, for some. But you know, at the end of the day, as I said, uh, Estonia does support the idea of Ukraine, and, and I and I stress this becoming a member of of the European Union eventually. And the first step in that path is, is becoming a candidate member, but that's just the first step. We would like to see Ukraine in the European Union and part of, of the European uh, family. And so, so we continue to press on with this issue. We will, we will raise this on all levels and, and discussions that we have with our um, you know, partners in Europe and, and, um, and continue pressing. And, 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 and hopefully, hopefully there will be some clarity on this issue in uh, uh, in, in the near future. France is one of those European countries that declares support for Ukraine but makes half-hearted decisions about it. One such idea is to take Ukraine not to the EU but to some European political organization created for EU partners who are not members of the Union. Researcher Antoine Aryakovsky believes that despite such actions, the French leadership will still not stand on the way of Ukraine's membership in the EU and will sooner or later agree to such developments. Let's watch the following comment. So, about the French position, uh, concerning the, the future integration of Ukraine in the EU. Um, the official position that was presented by uh, President Emmanuel Macron uh, recently, uh, last month, in Strasbourg, and his position was uh, repeated a few days later by uh, uh, Clément Beaune, who is the Minister for uh, European affairs in the French government, their position is to say that that will not be possible for Ukraine to join the EU 
before decades. There are many issues concerning corruption in particular, uh, but not only, uh, that will need time. Uh, of course, both repeat that uh, after the Versailles summit um, of the European Council, everybody agrees in France that Ukraine uh, is part already now of the family of European nations. Um, but concerning the integration, that will take decades. And this is why Macron uh, explained that he wants to initiate a new project, a community of European states uh, open to Ukraine, but also to other uh, countries like uh, United Kingdom and others who could join uh, this uh, political community uh, that would be uh, parallel to the European Union. But there is another information uh, which is more positive. Uh, recently, on May 24, the, the Ukrainian ambassador in France, Vadim Omelchenko, uh, gave an interview on, on the French TV LCI and he said that he had uh, different calls with the um, President Macron and also some meetings with the, um, uh, Clément Beaune and both assured him that France would, however, support Ukraine so that it obtains EU candidate status in June. Uh, of course, after the uh, opinion of the European Commission. So this support, which is now unofficial, was explained to Olga Stefanishina, who is, as you know, Deputy Prime Minister of, uh, of Ukraine. So, uh, for the, the, the words, the public words of the Ukrainian ambassador uh, have not been denied by the French government, which means that um, the, two, uh, the two ideas are not uh, contradictory. On one side, Ukraine, uh, it will take a long time before it will be part uh, of the European Union, but already now uh, France is ready to uh, support this status of a candidate to the European Union. So it means a support for the Ukrainian nation in this, uh, in this war. Uh, let us remind also that France is now the president of the um, uh, of the uh, European Union and, and until the, the 1st of July. And this is why France is coordinating at the level of the European Council the European uh, uh, sanctions against um, Russia. And also, of course, France is helping on the military level, but also on the on the humanitarian level, Ukraine. We also have got a comment from Italian expert on EU policy for our project. He, we asked Andrea Castagna to explain the position of Italy. What arguments are uh, circulating against our candidacy in Italy and EU? Details watch in the following video. I think there is a very hot topic now discussed in Brussels or in the corridors of the European Commission and in the rooms of the European Parliament. And this topic is the candidacy status for Ukraine. Um, historically speaking, getting into the EU is a very difficult process. And I don't think for Ukraine there will be an exception. Um, this process is very difficult because in order to get the candidacy status and then to start the pre-accession phase, you need to get the unanimity in the council, meaning that the other member states have to say, yes, we want you to be part in the European Union, you can start to become 
uh, a member of the European Union. And this process starts with the candidate status, but then requires a lot of reforms in the internal market, uh, for foreign policy, in the judiciary system, and it's very complicated. Uh, but you also get quite a lot of assistance from the other member states and also quite a lot of pre-accession funding. When we can, when you look at the situation uh, of Ukraine, I think that uh, it, this is going to be a bit more complicated. Um, yesterday, the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi said that, with the exception of Italy, all the major uh, EU member states are against the candidacy status for Ukraine, and in my opinion, um, they are against for three main reasons. The first one is the war. Um, as I said. Uh, historically speaking, the pre-accession reforms are very difficult and many member states, even in the Central and Eastern Europe, think that it will be very difficult for a country in a, in a situation of war to implement such reforms. So this is probably one of the major reasons why uh, many member states oppose to the candidacy status. But then there is also uh, one there is one reason which is a bit more political. Many member states don't want any new member states. So they are fine with the European Union as it is now. And uh, there is a kind of enlargement fatigue. Many public opinions are opposing to getting new EU member states. And I think this situation is quite present in countries like Italy, France, um, Germany. They just, you know, are a bit skeptical about uh, a new enlargement. And then there are some other countries which have a kind of a strong relationship with the Balkan countries that don't think that it's fair to give the candidacy status to uh, Ukraine when other member states, such as Albania, Montenegro, North Macedonia, have been waiting for getting the candidacy status for so long and they are still in the process of reforming their um, political systems in order to join the European Union. So there is always, uh, uh, you know, this kind of uh, uh, perception that uh, it will not be fair to give uh, a kind of fast track to, to Ukraine. But again, um, this is only uh, a very complicated uh, this public discussion. And if I look at the situation in Brussels, we see that there is a kind of strong support to see uh, Ukraine in the European Union. For instance, the European Parliament, one of the major European institutions, is very vocal and uh, it keeps repeating that Ukraine should join the European Union. When you go uh, around the European Parliament in Brussels, you see the Ukrainian flag together with the other uh, flags of the EU member states. So there is some uh, support for the candidate status, even in the European institutions. Also, the Commission is quite supportive, although they cannot decide by themselves. So uh, there is always uh, uh, a matter of negotiation. And I think that uh, many people in Brussels think the idea of giving the uh, candidate status to Ukraine will be quite symbolic because uh, of the war, because Ukrainians are fighting for European values. So it's really some uh, something that uh, uh, it's not decided yet. It's something that uh, many member states are discussing within their uh, own parliaments, within their own governments. So in general, and this is again my personal view, I think that new member states such as Poland, uh, Baltic states, are quite in favor of uh, giving the candidacy status. But other countries, France, Netherlands, Germany, and to some extent Italy, will be probably against. Uh, I know it sounds bizarre in Ukraine, but unfortunately this is an issue also related to the EU and its structure. And since we don't have a common EU foreign policy, everything should go through negotiation and uh, to, through bureaucratic processes that uh, probably from Ukraine sounds uh, bizarre uh, or quite uh, uh, old. You've been watching Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, NGO Euro-Atlantic Course and Analytical Center of Ukrainian Catholic University. In description to this video you can find the information about how personally you can help Ukraine against Russian aggression. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.